Saludos a nuestros amigos en Chile, Colombia, México y Brasil. <laughs> Graham Chapman, co-author of The Parrot Sketch, is no more. The rest of life, he rests in peace. I feel that I should say, good riddance to him. What's that supposed to mean? It means... Eli's Autobiography is an animated feature film telling the story of Graham Chapman. It's a fabulous 3D rock and roll journey through the life of a dead member of Monty Python. Basically the only way to bring his story to life would be through colourful animation. We've used some audio tapes of Graham's autobiography. When I realised we could have members of Monty Python playing the other characters, so it would effectively be a scene between Graham and John Cleese, or Graham and Terry. Then suddenly it came to life in my mind that we could actually make a film out of it. <laughs> Graham, please don't tell your father, it'll kill him. We started with a list of all the companies we'd love to work with, from 90 down to about 40 companies. Each company were giving a certain section of the script, which they would interpret in their own way. This must be one of my major formative experiences. At the beginning of the project, we didn't know which direction to go in. Do you edit it in Final Cut? Do you edit it in Premiere? Avid? What do you do? Premiere Pro basically seemed like the best answer. It was the answer. We were pushing Premiere to its max. We had 700,000 frames that were running out. Through After Effects, through Dynamic Link into Premiere Pro, the Mercury Playback Engine enabled us to play that. It flew. The machine flew. Without it, we would have been just sitting about, <laughs> waiting for things to render. Stop this! Stop it! That is naughty in the extreme. All the other animation studios naturally work in After Effects. It's an industry standard software. Dynamic Link is basically After Effects and Premiere talking together. You do something in After Effects, it dynamically changes it up on the Premiere timeline. Otherwise, we would have had to render, output, bring it back into another program, edit it. Not happy with that. Go back again, render it, change it. It was just so much faster. I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. Some of the animation companies went further. There's a musical number in it, it was all done in flash animation. Cell animation was all scanned and then taken to Photoshop, done all the color work and then brought into After Effects. All up the line, back into your Premiere Pro. Whatever we used, it was all the same platform. We couldn't do that in any other software. That's what we all needed, a seamless, smooth workflow. <laughs> you know very well there's not a shred of truth in it. Oh, okay. All of a sudden we had 18 animation styles. Why not make it in stereoscopic? Only one of them said that they worked in 3D before and they were lying. So uh, we knew it was going to be a big learning curve for all of us. Stereoscopic 3D is an image going to your left eye and your right eye. When you go to the cinema, it's basically working over time. So left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. That, that, that's basically it. <laughs> so I poked myself in the eye. With Adobe After Effects, we had to recreate that in the computer. Luckily, we had some script that was able to help us do that. In one click, we could change all the 3D glasses in the whole project to be left eye or right eye. I can't explain how much time that actually saved in our project. When we finished the film, we went into a post-production house and put it through their rather expensive machine, and the guy turned around and went, that's perfect. Anyone missing a left arm? <laughs> It was the only choice for all the animation companies who knew the products were ready to then take it up a level and, and, and learn what else the product could do and what else the software could do. It's the best film I've been in since I died. I wish I hadn't said that. We have brought Graham back in the most colourful and pioneering way, in my mind, in animation today. I think that's, that's a testament to Adobe. Alaya's Autobiography.